The Global Troop Resource, trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. Hi, I'm Coach Scott, and if you've been a loyal viewer of the Global Troop Resource for the past few years, you've probably guessed that we broadcast from a home base studio. That said, we're preparing for a future where we'd like to take our show on the road. Our plan is to start by visiting other troops on the East Coast and broadcast in person from scout camps and scout reservations. If you'd like to be on our show or to see our plans, visit GlobalTroopResource.com. That's GlobalTroopResource.com. Now, back to the show. Okay, so welcome everybody to the Troop Resource Show. Tonight our topic is STEM, and we have with us, of course, Randy, the man, Hardy. Hey everybody out there on TV land. And we have me, Scott Newman. We also have Steve Perone with us. Good evening. And tonight we have special guest Arland Hodgkiss. He is from Troop 542. Welcome, Arland. Thank you. Welcome. Good. So tell us about uh, STEM. What actually is STEM? And uh... what actually stands for Scouts Tasting Every Meat, <laughs> right? It's, it's a culinary experience that I came up with. Um, yes. I think it's well. Great. I am Chef Boy Hardy, after all. That's right. So it's going to be what? Scrapple. Scrapple. Bacon. Bacon. Hamburger? Chicken? Hamburger. 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 <laughs> so, um, all seriousness aside, Arland, yes. <laughs> tell us a little bit about STEM. So and it's, the scouts. It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been around since the beginning because we have merit badges that in 1910, when scouting started in this country were STEM merit badges and even things like pioneering or camping or canoeing have STEM or science and technology components to it. Really? Yeah. Tell me how canoeing has... Well, the STEM. oar is made out of wood, which uh -huh. is was a STEM on a tree. So that's how that works. <laughs> so if you think of paddling a canoe, if you actually use the paddle as a fulcrum, then you can actually draw the water either with you or away from you, and, and that's a simple uh, kind of machine, basically, as far as how to move things. Yeah, that's right. So the center of the canoe would be the fulcrum, mm -hmm. and then if you do a J-stroke, you're pushing the fulcrum one direction. Mm -hmm. Or you're not pushing the fulcrum. You're actually pushing the tail end of the lever, mm -hmm. the lever one yeah. direction. Yeah. And then if you do a C-stroke, you're pushing the lever the other, other way. Direction. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Very cool. Yep. So what else? So recently, I guess uh, we've had a number of initiatives that have been designed to increase the number of people going into STEM fields or science and technology engineering math fields as a career option. And so in 2010, with a big grant from ExxonMobil, Scouting started something called the NOVA Awards Program, which is kind of a combination of science, technology, engineering, math, and scouting. And so NOVA Awards were created and SuperNOVA Awards were also created. And so these are things that are electives, but they go along with either the typical advancements or merit badge program. And uh, NOVA Awards are kind of like merit badges because you have to have prerequisite merit badges to start a NOVA Award. And then you complete that and you get a special patch that's a little bigger, a little fancier than a merit badge and actually hangs in your temporary patch spot. And if you get one, you get this nice star-shaped patch. If you get more than one, you get these little triangular pins called pie pins. Not, not the pie that you would eat. But, you know. <laughs> I, I was going to say NOVA stands for NOSH. <laughs> one track mine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like the uh, symbol pie and so that just decorates the patch and then when you earn uh, two or three of these no awards and you can start on a supernova award which is actually a medal that uh, hmm. is named after different famous scientists or astronauts and so then you can after you earn those you can get bigger and bigger no awards I don't know if anybody's ever earned all the different no awards but they go along with the different programs in scouting, whether it be Cub Scout or 
Now, Scouts BSA or Venturing, so there are different no awards that are part of each of those programs. But it used to be just four for each program. So one would be a science one, one would be a technology one, one would be engineering, another for math. But now I think for Cub Scouts, they've got eight different no awards. Mm. In <coughs> Scouts BSA, there's six. I think there's still just four in, in the Venturing. Program. I seem to remember, and I haven't been a den leader for a long, long time, but there was a, a Scout patch. I think it was Cub Scouts. It was a compass with the little triangles on it. Is that was that Cubs or is that or is that Boy Scouts? Does anybody remember? Uh, I'm not sure. Because I'm wondering whether it's the same kind of thing. You said it's it's got little diamonds that you put. Well, on it has it. triangles. That oh, you triangles. Put on okay. It. Yeah, and right. Kind of I of think those. you're thinking of the, the various um, uh, levels of tiger, bear that that form a triangular badge. No, 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 no. This was <laughs> a patch. Like a it would hang off of, I believe it was off of the uh, pocket, mm -hmm. and then when you get certain other awards, you'd get the little the pins pin from, for the compass mm, point. Maybe. Is so. this like the time you saw Bigfoot? <laughs> you know, I did see oh, I know you Bigfoot. saw Bigfoot. I did, and it was here in Springfield, as a matter of fact. By the way, it's it's Nosh or Derv's Vittles Appetizers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and I was driving down Springfield Road. And there was something that was a mix between a kangaroo and a dog that went over the street. That's not me ringing, unless you're ringing. But anyway, Scott, getting back to your question, then in 2014, a program called STEM Scouts started. And so that's another initiative that's a completely co-educational program <coughs> that uh, has three different programs to it. One that goes along with elementary school, another one middle school, and also for high school. And that started in Knoxville, Tennessee, as a, an initiative to have something that's a completely uh, scouts-oriented program as far as the mission of scouting, but also a program to develop scouts into STEM professionals eventually. And so that piloted in Knoxville, Tennessee in 2014, was expanded to 12 councils nationwide in 2015, and it's expanded since then. It's still a national pilot program, so it's not a... a permanent part of scouting yet, but it's something that has really taken off. In our council here, we have one lab, the units are called labs, uh, that just started last year. Okay. Now, now talk to me about the NOVA for just a okay. moment. If, if a scout were interested in that, mm -hmm. that's separate from merit badges. It is. Is there anything we do at Merit Badge College? Yes. Is there a NOVA yes. element? We do offer a uh, NOVA award to each one. and We alternate and we've you know, in the four years that we've been offering them, we've had a different one, mm -hmm. and they have some pretty crazy names. Do you remember some of the names of those? Well, oh, one's or? shoot or one's launch. Lamb. Yeah, they, launch. Yeah. I remember yeah. that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's something to do with one of them was. There's math. one. Yeah. Uh, Forget what I had the to skip launch today. <laughs> launch. So so start your engines. <laughs> yeah, start your engines. Yeah. One, yeah. yeah, you need to start your engines. And I think and go. the other one for math is crunch for crunching crunch. numbers. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. I could crunch on some nosh. Mm. <laughs> mm, I'll bet. <laughs> Yeah, so we do offer one uh, each year. So what are we offering this year in, in the next merit badge? Do you remember? Jason's teaching at Jason Porter, but I'm not yeah, sure which I, one Yeah, I think it might be shoot. Mm -hmm. Shoot? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is shoot. Yeah. Okay. And that's not riflery. What is shoot? Well, it goes along with projectiles. I think he was asking me. Oh, Erlen. Sorry. But you can go ahead and answer Erlen. Because I got no shoot. <laughs> shoot. Yeah. We all know what shoot means, right? Yeah. Uh, so, well, you know what? Um, I just noticed on camera one, we also have uh, Zach here, who is an Eagle Scout. Say hi, Zach. Hello. Good. I didn't know you were on camera. Did you know you were on camera? No. We I are now. Thanks for owning it, Scott. <laughs> Okay. He was he was my best grip working behind the scenes. Key grip. Key grip. Key grip. Key grip. It's yeah. best boy. Yes. And don't ever grip. correct me again, Steve. Okay. <laughs> You've seen some pieces. Arlen, can we go back to that? The, the, I've been told that many times, Zach. Many times I've been told I'm missing a piece. Did we have in Cradle of Liberty? Yes. Uh, the STEM Scouts. The yeah. STEM Scouts, yeah. Now, that's it's not a traditional no, scouting not. with camping and stuff. They, it's not even uniform, is it? It has a t-shirt. Okay. And they... Uh, recommend that you have a lab coat for the exercises that they do. They're called modules uh, that involve chemistry or something where things might get messy. But 
Uh, there's no formal uniform like we would consider for Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts or Scouts BSA now and, and venturing. So it's just a t-shirt. And it's young ladies, young men. Yep. Completely co-educational. Co-educational. Yep. And there wouldn't be the traditional uh, advancement then. There is. There is some Each advancement. module <laughs> has a badge that you can earn as long as you complete all the requirements and, and components of it but it's not a traditional rank advancement like you would have for tenderfoot first class or or you know bear or wolf and the cubs it's something where you get an electronic badge everything is uh, digital and if you finish all of the things in the module you get an electronic badge and you keep an electronic notebook as far as all the things that you are going to be doing. Do that on your phone or a laptop? Or Laptops, what? usually. Okay. Yeah. But it is completely digital, so you can have it on your smart device as well. Hi, I'm Coach Scott from the Global Troop Resource. I'd like to share with you some information about a nonprofit called the Education Alliance for Amateur Radio. These are the guys that I call to help my troop complete the Radio Merit Badge, and they are awesome. If you have any interest in running the Radio Merit Badge for your troop and are on the East Coast, preferably the Mid-Atlantic region, they are an excellent resource. They also happen to teach the Electronics and Electricity Merit Badges, but the Radio Merit Badge is their specialty. Their goal is to promote science, technology, engineering, and math education within organizations like the Scouts, plus communities like first responders and others who use or advance the use of amateur radio. Calling your attention to this nonprofit is just another way that Global Troop Resource is trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. You can learn more at www.radiostemalliance.org. Now, back to the show. So you're doing this in a lab in a yes. school, generally. Yeah. And who is leading the uh, the class? Uh, there's a the position that would be equivalent to a scout master is called a lab manager. And then there are youth leadership positions where the equivalent to like a senior patrol leader is called the program manager and there's an assistant program manager. And then there are technicians that are doing the work and uh, then they're uh, basically a small group. It's Usually the labs are not more than 10 to 15 of these STEM scouts and uh, maybe two or three lab managers as far as the adults. And how long are the, uh, the modules that they take? Modules are generally four to six weeks and there's usually five or six of them during the school year. The year follows the school year so you usually start in September and finish in May, June. Okay. So there's a syllabus for the... Yep, uh, yep. and a leader's, leader's guide. Follow, a leader's guide. And the now, nice so, so sorry, just for a second. Now, was this happening in school? After school. After school, okay, because I know that, that schools are very picky about... Correct. Okay, so it's an after but school it's program. It's often in the school building, and the one that started <coughs> in our council is at Brookyoman Valley Middle School. Okay, that's where we're doing the uh, Merit exactly. College this year. So it's a great location. They already had the equipment there as far as maker space, and they have a great robotics team that you know they're already used to mm. doing these things. They have they've got, maker space? Yep, they've got a great mm. shop as far as working on anything from things you would put in a robot to cars and right. you know all the things facility wise are there they you know wanted something else to do when it's not in season for the robotics team so they okay. thought this would be a great idea it yes. is a great idea i'm confused <laughs> wait not wait, Randy. wait really i'm confused <laughs> the kids get up in the morning they get on a bus they go to school perky in middle school they go to class right then after all their classes are done. This STEM is held right in the school. Why do they need this syllabus? <laughs> oh, I don't get it. It's not a syllabus. It's a silly bus. See, they get to be silly after school. But but it doesn't meet until five thirty, so I have to go home and then come back. <laughs> okay, so that's the point of this syllabus. <laughs> I get it. I get it now. I'm keeping you on your toes, aren't I? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome because, frankly, I've been trying to find out about maker groups in the area right. because uh, Zach and I both uh, purchased raspberry pies. Mm -hmm. and Not the kind you can eat. Oh, darn. <laughs> so, I prefer cherry. 
So that'd be an Arduino for you. <laughs> uh, so, but I'm not exactly certain how to get started with mm-hmm. it. And so I'm looking for a maker lab. I know there's one in Philadelphia yep. down in Gray's Ferry, mm-hmm. but I just, I just can't get there. So mm-hmm. that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and there are a number of high schools that have those kinds of facilities. Uh, this is the first one to start in Philadelphia because I, I guess the cost is a factor, and that's one thing that's kind of good or bad for this program because it costs everybody $200 a year to participate. But it's a completely canned program, so for that $200 per year, it covers everything from the program and all the equipment, all the supplies, all you have to do is basically have your uh, registration fee paid for the year and the supplies are ordered. As soon as you start a map module, they come, you know, automatic shipments and, and it's all completely uh, computer organized as far as the ordering and, and shipping and you just get the stuff in a tub of uh, um, the materials and you get it out and you you have it all ready to go. You don't have to reorder anything. And that uh, is awesome. It is Just very good. Awesome. And so for that two hundred dollars, it covers a lot of materials that if you went out and bought them yourself, it might cost more than that. So let's say we've got scouts in Troop Five Twelve here in Springfield, yeah. and we want to get them involved right. in one of these programs. Perky Omen East is way far away yes. from here. Yes, take the syllabus. Take, we'll take the silly bus up, but uh, on a serious note, we'll mm-hmm. take the serious bus for a moment. Uh, how would we get a program like this going? So you would just apply. It's something where you would see the council as far as you know setting up an application. It's just like starting any new unit in scouting, and so you would. Uh, the only other thing besides the two hundred dollars per year for the them scouts is you would have to pay forty dollars per year to charter a new unit. Okay. Interesting. So it's a STEM unit. Yeah. And it's it's a lab, not a troop or a pack or okay. a so it's okay. called a lab. And is it assigned a unit number? Yes. And uh, I think the uh, one in Perky Oma Valley they call it uh, a lab two thousand and one. I'm not sure exactly the significance of okay. that, but yeah. So it is assigned a number. Be like space I'm assuming Odyssey, it was an Odyssey to get that number. Oh, yeah. It might have been. Yeah. It probably was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was in space or if it was in Perkyo Valley. Now he's catching on. <laughs> he's a little slow, Scott. <laughs> I don't know how he teaches these kids. <laughs> so, so our lab, sorry, lab masters, what? Manager. Manager? Lab yes. manager. Yes. Would this be a scout leader or could it be a parent? Well, interestingly or? enough, the main guy who got this started in Perkyoma Valley is actually the principal of the middle school. Okay. And so he thought this would be a good idea. Uh, there is one other lab manager there who happens to work for Dow Chemical, which is right next door. Right. And there's an assistant lab manager that works for Lockheed Martin. So it's typically people that have either some kind of education or science type okay. career. And they'd have to go through all the youth protection, exactly. security so any, checks, like all any that other kind of stuff. adult uh, leader, they'd have to fill out the application and do the YPT and background okay. checks and things like that. Oh, and that, that we're good with, Scott. It's that technical part that kind of rules us out, the Lockheed Martin Dow Chemical. But the interesting it's going thing, to disqualify us. The interesting thing is that most of the programs really are dependent on parent involvement. It's not like your typical troop meetings where parents drop off and you don't see them again. Uh, here, they really encourage the parents to stay and help out with the exercises, particularly if they have an interest in the STEM field. Okay, so let's say, that, for example, do you do you know what they are doing up in in Perky Omen? For instance, a Lockheed Mark, and are they teaching them how to build planes? Are so, they teaching so there's a curriculum each year. The curriculum is different, and so uh, I'm not sure exactly what module they're in at this point. But I know they started out with a robotics module. That's usually the first one of the year for middle school. They also had a module on an app, mobile app design program, which was actually piloted here by our STEM committee at Cobbs Creek uh, a year ago. And so it's something where you use MIT App Inventor. It's just a free program that you can design any kind of app that you would put on your smart device. So that's a module on the STEM Scouts program. 
Uh, and they also have a module that they did on optics or the kind of physics of light. And sure. They use lasers and, and prisms and that sort of thing. Angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Refraction. Right. Total internal reflection. It's a really great lab where they have these uh, two liter bottles of water and you can shine a laser through it and see how it bends and that sort of thing. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. And then they have a, I think they finished the year off with a module on drones and how to fly drones and the kind of physics of aviation and, and how that works and everything. Totally cool. Yeah. Totally cool. So how do we get one started here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, I guess it's recruit parents, right? Yes, that's the main thing, but and also a, to find the location. location. School, yeah, yeah, it would be helpful to have a location or some oh, kind of they, lab they have a or lab. something like that. It isn't absolutely necessary. Uh, like I said, this is the first one on our council, but Garden State Council across the river has had one for a few years, and they I visited one when we were considering it here in this council. They actually had the lab meeting in a VFW post because it had a big room right. and tables and chairs. And they, you know, like I said, this program contains everything in the kits that come with each module that you need. So you really don't have to have a lab as long as you have tables and a sink and you know maybe a kitchen area for food of course <laughs> then, then, you're really, then you're really good to go i i was just chuckling because i was thinking about vfws and the ones that i've been in and that'd be fine with me <laughs> <laughs> because of the adult beverages, the adult beverages. <laughs> but i don't think i just can't imagine having it in a vfw but, well, but you know what any place that as long as you have the yeah. space. Well, I guess what I, what I was thinking there is because with schools, you've got, when you hear labs, I think Bunsen burners and you know, right. things of that nature are really a lab space. Well, but and this one that has a maker space. So the first okay. pictures I saw of them doing the robotics, they were in the kind of lab that has all the maker right. space. Right, right. So oh, that's just fantastic. Things, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, some of the maker space that I've heard about has got big equipment like metal lathes yep. and laser cutters laser cutters and all those kinds of things yep. so speaking of maker space <coughs> hurry up Zach <laughs> <laughs> well you're missing like half of the kit so. shh, shh. he's missing I'm doing this right now kit. look at my yeah. hands talk about the right model here. not about Randy <laughs> Now, we have a STEM center up at Rest of the Falls, don't we? We do, yes. And what do we do there? So that's an old dining hall, the Great Bend Dining Hall, and there they've got uh, facilities for everything from robotics to radio. They've got a ham radio operation. They also teach engineering merit badge. You know, we did a show on radio. And I do have a ham radio. He does? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and they teach chemistry, they teach uh, movie making, and, and a lot of the technology merit badges are taught there uh, as far as digital technology, that sort of thing. And uh, they we're always looking to add new merit badges, but I think they have about 10 different STEM merit badges they offer mm -hmm. in that uh, dining hall. Akanikin has the science they center, too. Yes, they do. They, that yeah. has been around longer than the one that we have at Resica, and that was actually... Uh, built or I think it was an old hall there that they <coughs> repurposed for a STEM center at right. and, and I got a big grant from they Becton. did an amazing Dickinson. job yeah. it really looked nice where, when I was yeah. there where did they get their grant from from Becton Dixon I think it's a, a kind of a chemical company that you know, I, I don't know if you've noticed, there's a huge a liquid nitrogen tank that's kind of outside of yes, the yes. Akinik, and, and so that's something that I think the funding all comes from the Becton Dixon. Grant. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Go Becton Dixon. <laughs> so we, we don't have any major funding that is supporting the Resca Falls uh, STEM Center, but you know we've been able to get some small funding from the council, and, and we've been able to use uh, OA members to kind of remodel. And but if you would like to become a sponsor, that's right. exactly. we'd like to hear from you. Exactly. Because I know, at least with the STEM Scouts program, the original idea in our council was to fund it in the city as an after-school program for elementary schools. And we had a, a grant to a major corporation that, that wasn't uh, approved. And so that's kind of held that back mm. at this point. Do you know about the Maker building in Grace Ferry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it's... it's I do. 
it's hard for, at least in the city, for people to be able to afford $200 a year. So that's why right. we had to apply right. for a major grant to, to fund the after-school programs. Right. Huh. Maybe you could do a campership. That'd be a stemmership. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need some seed money. Uh, <laughs> I stem those jokes. <laughs> I'll nip it in the bud. <laughs> Actually, I work right... Uh, across the river from the uh, the maker site. Okay. Do you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Abrams and Cancer Center is right on the other side of uh, Grace Ferry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't. Thirty Fourth Street Bridge. It's right, All right. there. Um, it's really yeah, I know. Penn Innovation Center. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think Drexel University has a very good maker space program there as well. Mm-hmm. So that's something we have. Know that. Former Eagle Scout at Drexel. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we do. So we have that an it. Be not former Eagle Scout. Well, it's an Eagle, Eagle Scout. Scout. Former, former true fight, true fight fight 12. Yeah. yeah. Zach's a former Eagle Scout. <laughs> yeah. <That's> a... <laughs> so, uh, awesome. Awesome. Well, so, great discussion on STEM. I've learned an awful lot tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So, you, you won't retain it. But <laughs> <laughs> At least not till next time, right? Yeah. All right. I think on that note, we will end the show. So thank you, You're everybody, welcome. for attending, uh, and we will see you next time. Hi, I'm Coach Scott from the Global Troop Resource. I'd like to share with you some information about a nonprofit called the Education Alliance for Amateur Radio. These are the guys that I called to help my troop complete the Radio Merit Badge, and they are awesome. If you have any interest in running the Radio Merit Badge for your troop and are on the East Coast, preferably the Mid-Atlantic region, they are an excellent resource. They also happen to teach the Electronics and Electricity Merit Badges, but the Radio Merit Badge is their specialty. Their goal is to promote science, technology, engineering, and math education within organizations like the Scouts, plus communities like first responders and others who use or advance the use of amateur radio. Calling your attention to this nonprofit is just another way that Global Troop Resource is trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. You can learn more at www.radiostemalliance.org. Now, back to the show. Hi. I'm Coach Scott, and if you've been a loyal viewer of the Global Troop Resource for the past few years, you've probably guessed that we broadcast from a home base studio. That said, we're preparing for a future where we'd like to take our show on the road. Our plan is to start by visiting other troops on the East Coast and broadcast in person from scout camps and scout reservations. If you'd like to be on our show or to see our plans, visit GlobalTroopResource.com. That's GlobalTroopResource.com. The Global Troop Resource, trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack.